how to be content in seasons of waiting. I talked about that a little bit. My answer is stop waiting. I think that's what you guys said. Just don't wait. Don't wait. Take the word wait. Yeah, take it out of your vocabulary. No more waiting. Okay, just doing. This is Janet's gift. <laughs> Speaking and answering questions. No. Oh my gosh, that's such a lie. Deborah Brown's a, I won't say it. Uh, uh, what was it now? I forgot all this. Seasons wait. Waiting, don't wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. When, when you get old, this is what happens, ladies. I'm telling you. I'm trying to write stuff down because it's woo. Uh, what I was going to try and say was uh, whatever you do, whatever God has you doing, and whatever you're doing right now is what God has you doing because he's a sovereign God, do it with all your might. Do it with a happy heart. Pour your, what she was saying, pour your life into it. Don't have to do the stuff you're doing. If you're a discontent daughter in a home because you don't like the thing that God has you doing, your argument is not with your parents. Your argument is with God. Be content with whatever God has for you. Not that it doesn't mean you shouldn't move towards doing some other things, possibly. Um, I've found that God sometimes doesn't move me to the next thing until I'm content with the thing he's got me doing until I learned the lessons I need to learn in that thing. Um, some of you girls are probably helping your moms at home with younger children. Uh, I hope you're doing that with a happy heart. Uh, if that's what God has you doing, that's where you're serving right now, that's a blessing. It's a blessing to you and it's a blessing to your mom. Uh, if God has you out and about being a realtor and connecting people out in the community, do it with all your heart. Uh, everything that we should do should be as unto the Lord. Every single thing. If you're changing that dirty diaper, it's as unto the Lord. If you are correcting a mass problem, it is as unto the Lord, moms. Don't gripe about it. Everything we do should be uh, the aroma of Christ. So you, you young people who are living your life, you can only spend each moment one time. And you can't get it back, and you can't relive it, and you can't really do it better. So I beg you to choose each moment well and live it to God's glory and choose a happy heart about the things that you're doing. And that takes really trusting God and deciding that he does have you right where he wants you and that he has your, your uh, best interests at his, at his heart. He loves you. For more ideas, I would say, again, I'm just going to plug the sermon series we were talking about earlier. <laughs> I really encourage you to listen through this. This is super uh, inspiring. And it just, one thing I love about Dr. Kaiser is that he's a, he's a really good scholar, and he digs into these women in the Bible and brings out details that you've never heard before and, um, and breaks all kinds of boxes. And uh, so, yeah, if you're, if you're still kind of stumped when it comes to what you can be doing or trying to figure out some practical ideas. I think you'll get a lot out of these messages and they're just, they're so exciting. Yeah. Uh, some of you are quieter people, which are not us, okay? Uh, your ministry is gonna look different than another person's ministry. So I wanted to say, add that on. Don't feel like, oh, I can't be like her, her ministry. I can't do things that so-and-so does. That is, that's why we have a body. Uh, some of the dearest people I know that I think are some of the dearest saints are the people who serve quietly behind the scenes, no attention to themselves. Uh, God sees what you're doing. Whatever he gives you to do is what is just right. I, we're a body. We need every single part to do what they're meant to do. And sometimes your part is to go to a nursing home and spend time with a 90-year-old who's dying every, every week for 10 years. I watched my mother-in-law do that with several different people till they, they out died. You know, they would die and she'd take on the next one. Uh, you know, your ministry doesn't have to be flashy. In fact, most of the time it is not. That prepares you for marriage. Most of your, your ministry in marriage is unnoticed by anybody but God. But then your children rise up and call you blessed and it's great. But uh, most, of your, most of your life ministry, what they were talking about earlier, is out of your heart. Uh, and so it's not about people seeing it. It's not about it being pretty. 
it's really about serving others and, and doing whatever love of Christ motivates you to do. So those of you that are quieter and have a, what we would call a simpler ministry, it is every bit as important as somebody who sings well or plays the piano well or speaks well or gives millions of dollars to the board. None of that, God doesn't care about any of those things. He gives you the gift he gives you and he just wants you to use what he's given you and the time that he's given you well.